Welcome to Talking in Stations, a podcast about EVE Online. Uh, my name is Carneros. I'm the host today. And we got some uh, of the CCP, I'm sorry, the Talking in Stations crew. And we have some special guests for you today as well. Um, here on the crew, we have Abby Roba. Rova. Hi, everybody. Thank you. And in, uh, as our engineer today, we have Nick Bison. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, and then we have Katya Say. Hello, hello. And for our guests today, um, we're going to be talking to Enrique Arnold. Enrique Arnold. Uh, and his mic is being adjusted at the moment, so stand by. Um, but before that, we're going to interview uh, a couple of CCP guests for GM Week. We've got CCP Goat. Hi, everybody. Nice. And CCP Paragon. Good afternoon. Thank you. And then to keep us all out of trouble, we have CCP Swift <laughs> watching in the background. And he probably didn't want me to call that out, but I just had to tease him for a moment. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy to be here for, uh, it, it, feels, it feels like home. I like it. I know, it's great. Thank you. It's great to have you here. Feels like old days, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, on today's show, we're going to start with um, a little bit of a reveal. If you haven't been, um, if you didn't know this, tomorrow starts GM week, and we're going to hear a little bit more about it. But let's meet our guests today and uh, jump into that section of the show. So with us today is GM Goat and GM Paragon. And uh, hopefully I didn't just disconnect something. Okay, no, go. We're good. So, tell us uh, tell us a little bit about yourselves, and um, uh, and we'll we'll start from there. Um, how how long uh, um, how did you get a job at CCP as a GM? Were you playing Eve before that? Yeah, you want to start? Sure, I can start. <clears throat> I uh, used to play Eve a lot. Yeah, uh, when Eve came out. Back in back in the day, it was all everybody in Iceland could talk about. So I mean, everybody who had a computer tried it. So <clears throat> I got a job there, uh, and then stayed for a little bit with the company and left. Took a hiatus from the company for five years, and then came back uh, last year. Fortuitously, a uh, position in my old my old department opened up, and I I got in. Kept nice. up to date with everything. Yeah, way to go. I, I uh, I mainly fly missions. Um, I have not yet uh, had the courage to do an abyssal rift. I just I just I, I, I I'm so sure I'm gonna fail it somehow. Um, I think that is everything you need to know about my <laughs> my Eve career, really. Amen. My advice on that is to pick pick a a ship and a fit and just make ten of them. And, and you'll feel more confidence when you have a stack of the ships to just go through and like, okay, no biggie. Then you won't get nervous till you get down to like three. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's very funny. Uh, you still end up losing seven, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you still got three left. Who cares that I lost seven? That's, you know, that would be my mentality. As, as someone who um, recently tried Abyssals and lost a couple of Gila's, um actually last one in my opinion through no fault of my own put in a petition uh speaking of gm week put in a petition to get a reimbursement and got denied uh of course still didn't uh, uh affect me and i'm still going out trying abyssals because they're actually really good fun and, and engaging pve nice nice ccb yeah. paragon tell us a little bit about your your background how did you get to be a gm uh, I've been at CSP for just over a year now. Um, before that, I played Eve for a very long time. Uh, very much 
and um, mostly in various null sec alliances, uh, still play quite actively. And uh, yeah, not much to say, just uh, there was an interesting opportunity happening at the department uh, around last year, and I, I took it. Here I am. Nice. Well, great to have both of you here. Excellent. So um, tell us a little bit about what GM Week is, especially for our listeners who, who are new to EVE and haven't uh, experienced it yet. And what does this tradition mean to GMs? So yeah, I can, I can start. Um, it was four years ago or five that I think that uh, the <clears throat> GM's GM department itself was looking at a way that they could engage with the community in other ways than just answering petitions. Um, so they found out that they have a lot of leeway to do stuff um, in game as long as we do it, um, I don't know, professionally, should we say, and watch our biases and such. And they put together a plan of events to do, which included things like asking the community to uh, bring fan art. And you can actually see here behind me, there's two winners of the first fan art contest that got printed and sent and hung up in the CCP office. Um, another one of the events that was very successful was uh, the, uh, they went through all of their, <laughs> all accounts that had been banned for botting and found the ones that they uh, liked the most, took the biggest ships and placed them in ULI for people to shoot. And this was, of course, uh, an ask, per no, I'll, I'll do first, ask permission later kind of thing. No, no I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, wow. So that's a, yeah, that's a tradition that we we keep going. Um, we might see it this week. Yeah, we definitely will. Yeah. Although, okay. All right. Although the message is that we're getting very, very short on uh, big ships that are botting. Wow. So we maybe this will be the last time for a while. We don't know. Wow. Um, yeah. Uh, eventually, it just became a, an annual thing where they kept doing things. Um, one of the most memorable competitions was to rename a GM. Uh, so I think it was in 2019 that uh, poor GM Spider had his name changed to GM Socket Closed. Oh. Wow. But uh, it's all fun. It's pretty much just we like to have fun at work as much as we can. And uh, taking an entire week where we just have fun with the community, that's, that's a win. Nice. When it's not GM week, what is your daily life, daily job life like? Paragon, do you want to take this? Um, well, at least for us here at the CCP office, um, it varies a lot. Uh, we are split up into different micro teams uh, where we either have uh, individual projects or we're tackling uh, things in small teams of maybe two to three. So it can vary quite a lot uh, depending on what you're doing here as a GM at CSP. Uh, there are different departments, uh, the security guys, uh, you know, the building guys uh and all that stuff but, but yeah it's it's uh it's hard work uh it's not long hours but there's definitely pressure uh to get things done that we want to get done so it's it's hard to say exactly what we do each day but you know we show up at the office and we <laughs> we spin up some problems and we take a look at them it's mostly a series of decision making over the course of the day with various people on how we either want to approach a problem or make changes to uh, how we do support for you online. Um, sorry, Karnaros just said something there, which is great. If Guys, if you're out there and you have any questions in chat, just drop them in chat and we'll try and try and ask these great guys uh, these questions. It sounds to me, Paragon, that you actually have a lot of leeway um, in kind of what you do. Like you mentioned, you know, it's not just mindless answering tickets. You might, does it sound like you like, you might notify a problem in the game and like try and figure out a way to, to attack it. Is it, yeah, is that's it quite right. open? Uh, for us, yeah, it's, uh, it's most of what we do, at least for the time spent, uh, at least currently for the last few months. 
and we uh, have a, a strong say in that. Like we are the ones that do the work, and uh, uh, it's almost exclusively always handled uh, via some sort of team, though. So oh, it can be something that you get assigned or. Most of the time, I just get an idea that I'd like to do something or make some sort of change and uh, uh, do the work and present it to uh, the GM leads and uh, tell them that this would be a really good idea. And most of the time, they just say, yeah, let's do it. Wow. So what is the difference between a GM and an ISD? The GMs are employees of CCP, while the ISDs are vol uh, volunteers. And it's um, it's a process you have to go through to get an ISD position, and you do not get um, half of the, should I say, power that you could get as a GM. Okay. And so, okay, go, go ahead. No, no, please, you finish. What's the difference between a GM and customer service then? Do you do GMs answer CS tickets um, like CS, or is it the same thing? Yeah, exclusively. Uh, so the GM title is someone that um, is in the support department, and they are also the only people who are allowed to interact with the game world. That includes the customers. Um, no one else is allowed to do that. So that is primarily what the title itself it means. So the difference is that this is someone who interacts with a with the live world of EVE Online, uh, whether that's in a service sense or or some kind of intervention sense. Uh, yeah, that pretty much it. So, um, sorry, I, I'm just after drawing the blank. I had a question. <laughs> What's the, the most common CS ticket? I, I mean, what I... <laughs> uh, um, is it ship reimbursement for abyssal ossels? <laughs> that's a hot one. No, no. Um, there's definitely just general questions about Emo Line is way up there. Um, it's old game. There's lots of content in it. And as I'm sure everyone is aware, including us and everyone at CCP, it's a tough thing, game to learn. So uh, just general questions about Emo Line are probably the most common thing we get asked about. You mentioned um, about interacting with the game universe and we know uh, often the ISDs are like hanging out in rookie chat with like Mike uh, Mike Az Azariah, the CSM. But ye, if I'm correct, the GMs are the people that actually like directly conversation new accounts um, and like spend 10, 15 minutes talking to new players. Is that right? Yes. That's actually a part of a program that was uh, uh, founded by a GM within the, our department who like thought, this would be a good thing to do for customers. So we have a special team that reaches out to new people to uh, sort of just guide them through their starting steps. And it's it's paid off. Yeah, I often see like positive comments about that, whether it's on um, different social medias, people like, oh my God, I can't believe someone took the time to reach out to me. Um, I actually had that experience where I moved into a new house and I got a new computer. So I must have had like a new IP and stuff. And um I, I created an account and a GM reached out to me to, you know, check if I had any problems. And I just, I was like, oh my God, I've never had this before. It was really good. Um, a really nice service. The first impression is usually, oh my God, red text. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I'm also sure that, uh, like we have spotted the same problem as you have and everyone else. It's that first, it's that crucial moment of the, your first few hours in the game where we see people fall off, uh, this is one of the solutions to try to fix that problem. And we are very happy with it. It, it performs very well. Do you get people who, who don't believe you're really a GM? Never had that happen. I mean, in what, in what scenario? I like when you're, when you're convoying them the first time to you know, say, how are you doing? You're a new player. You know, are you okay? Do you have any questions? I, I assume no one ever did that for me, but that was a long time ago. I don't know. I've never actually done one of those oh. myself, but uh, usually when I am convoying someone, they take it very seriously. Okay. <laughs> it might be because I do slightly different things. 
if you have a very new player, then the question will be about the red, te red text. Like, why, why, why is your text red? What, what's special about you? Nice. <laughs> we have a question there from chat. Is um, do you get much traffic on the live chat versus like the ticket system? Uh, I don't have the exact percentages, but we do. Yes, uh, and a lot of. Um, a lot of uh, fast fire questions are very good to get in the chats because then we can either tell the customer like this is something that needs to be investigated and we'll take a look at it or we can give them an answer like in five minutes which is perfect for some uh, game like even line okay ra rather than the more like technical things that would require a, a ticket like i suppose a, a ship loss would be easier to deal with on the ticket than than on a live chat would it yeah exactly yeah, there are some things that just cannot be handled in chat, usually because they need to be handled by a specific department. Um, so a ticket is usually just created for you in the chat, and then they just put it to the person who's going to take a look at it for you. But yeah, live chat is it's huge. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a secret how much it is, but it's, it's a lot. I actually it's... didn't. I didn't realize there was a live chat system. <laughs> Me neither, actually. Yeah, I mean, there are a bunch of questions that could be shot through uh, the live chat system. For instance, like one that just pops into my head is, um, do, do, do you guys know how to update the member count of a corporation? Like, it's not, it's not easy. So like, oh, if you outgrow the number uh, for your skill? Yeah, right. You you, yeah. Then you you train your skill, you train your skill, but nothing happens with the cap. cap no, you have to the... go back and uh, do something, yeah. Right. Yeah. And so the, our response time for live chat is something between 10 and 20 seconds, so you can get instant service. Um, that's pretty much the whole point behind it. So where is that live chat? It's under the support page on our uh, the EM Online website. It's on a few places, actually. It's on the sign up page on the Evil Line website, and it's in one place on the support website. But uh, being one of the people who's developing live chat here, uh, we are working on improving it for the. Uh, it's going to show up in more places, uh, but we have to do some behind the scenes technical work on it uh, for that to work. But yeah, you can go to emonline.com slash sign up and you can start talking to the chat bot and see if you can get past that base. No, no, I'm kidding. He's really good. I made him myself, so he's the best. For those of you watching the show live, thank you to Ashy Paws for putting the link into uh, that part of the support page. Thank you. Sounds to me like you're you're looking to bring that in game from what you were saying with like the, the back end stuff. Uh, no, there are no plans to put it in game. But... Not even a link in the in the help section or something uh we're taking a look at something like the launcher um so it's going to be instantly accessible to everyone from that's there. a great idea mm -hmm. nice and that's something that's we're still working on it uh it needs to improve before we put it there not a great question is live chat english only or are there other language available too it's it's in all all of our supported languages fantastic wow wow and and uh, as we know, you're like constantly working to expand support for supported languages. Yeah. All right, way to go. So, what are the easiest CS tickets? If you're going to grab grab a ticket out, uh, and the next one comes up, what do you hope it's going to be? I I can do I can do yeah. The, when I exploit the investigations. <laughs> oh, okay. No. No, I want to say um, you want it to be some sort of question about gameplay, like a, a mechanic or something that you know off the top of your head. That's what you want. Um, if it's something that requires you to go investigating and then you need to figure out what's either going wrong or what was designed 15 years ago, sometimes that can be a little bit more time consuming, but I think it's safe to say that almost every ticket is different. It's something new all the time. A uh, question from chat there. What is like the funniest or like strangest tickets you've gotten? I know. I mean, funniest or strangest? Well, both, both. Things. Yeah, so give me I both. 
So, okay, I can't really say exact. Okay, so the, uh, the the relationship between you guys and us is sacred. So we cannot talk about individual anything. So if someone has a conversation with us, we will never reveal anything from it. But there was one. It was a Alliance Loco submission. And I think uh, the Swiftster can chime in because I showed this to literally last week. We have it saint in our like internal documentation page as the best ticket ever submitted. But uh, it was hilarious. Uh, we cried. Like I cried of laughter when I read it. It's so funny. And that happened last year. Yeah. I can also confirm that when the uh, CSB Aurora did a, a live re, uh, reenactment of the, um, of the ticket, uh, and I was doubled over in laughter for about uh, a solid 45 seconds after she was done uh, reading it. It was an amazing ticket. Uh, and there's like a few other ones that I've seen where they've just been absolutely hilarious. Like the dog ate my homework level of uh, of just hilarious. Like, oh, cat stepped on my keyboard. I lost this. Can you give it back? And then like a picture of the cat and then like dumb shit like that. Well, not dumb, but uh, uh, very whimsical and and uh, <coughs> side splitting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did they get it back? Oh, I, I have no idea. Uh, but for but for the uh, the logo one, I believe it was uh, uh, they had a positive interaction with the uh, with the support staff for their alliance logo. Accepted. Listen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, th I think I can I can, I can uh, say the same. The local alliance, uh, the alliance local submission tickets are usually the funniest ones because th that's also where you are allowed to laugh. I would I would say. Yeah. I I mean I've heard stories in game of of things and thought I wonder if they're going to put in a ticket and what the GMs would say. One of one of my guys in my alliance uh, came back to his computer once, and his daughter, who's a toddler, had managed to had she knew how to click the mouse, and she had undocked his avatar, and it was 150 kilometers from the station, with hostels in local watching him. I remember but, this, but they thought it was a trap. Um, they didn't actually attack him, and he just turned around and went back and docked. But I thought to myself, you know, but you know, it's not CCP's fault if it dies. <laughs> it's not we don't believe you. Like uh, if you don't give yourself back at circumstances like this, it's not because we don't want to. It's because we we have to be able to verify some sort of issue. Otherwise, we're just changing the game to fit how we see, and that's not going to happen. Um, so yeah, those cases are heartbreaking for us to read as well. Uh, People who have accidentally sold all their stuff or or something like that. Like that is really heartbreaking. But you know, it's in someone else's hand now and we can't step in. It's very it's it's one of the hardest things for sure. I want to I want to like uh, reiterate on that. We have a policy of what we can and can't reimburse. And the reason we have this policy is so that we're not interfering in the game world in some way so that uh, like a sob story can change a war or something. That's why we have these working principles for ourselves. <clears throat> uh, sometimes it comes out, off as us not wanting to do something. And, uh, and uh, an old favorite meme from E Line was that the log shows nothing. I mean, but uh, this was all just due to because we can't we can't destroy the economy or the game world. If something like this happens, it happens. Yeah, I actually am. Um, so I, I, as I said, I, I had a loss. Um wasn't my fault. I had like pictures in a video and I, I submitted the thing and I got a lovely reply back from a GM and it just said, look, this isn't a verifiable bug. You know what I mean? This, this is not a verifiable. So obviously you have a list of a set criteria and was I a little bit salty? Yeah, I was a little bit salty. I mean, 10 minutes later, was I over it? Yeah. 10 minutes later, I was over it and you know, you move on. Stuff happens. Stuff gets blown up. That's why we play the game. It yeah. wasn't a Titan, so I mean, if I had undocked an avatar and my daughter had undocked an avatar, it'd be a completely different situation. <laughs> yeah, I think that's one of the the big like selling points, or one thing that like keeps uh, older players around, and and even people like me around, is the uh, loss and Eve is like it matters, 
uh, and you like you feel the sting when you experience a loss, no matter like the size of it. You're like, oh damn it. Uh, so like like a uh, CCB go was saying, like they can't just interfere and just like uh, undo that because um, of like just randomness, you know. I also I want to interject because I see chat being a little uh, pointing out some stuff. We are the uh, PX department. We are uh, player experience, customer support. We are not the dev team. Sorry, You're, uh, we can take your anchor, but it's pretty misdirected when it comes to us. We're not at this. Oh. Should talk, man. Yeah, we're not a design team. We are the dev team. We're not a design team. <laughs> uh, to correct that, but if. If you don't like changes made to the game, don't ask me about it. I had nothing to do with that. Yeah, you can talk to me about it, and then I can relay that information. <laughs> you can just sure. add CCP underscore Swift, Swift in chat, or, or like poke me on Discord, it's fine. Uh, your friendly neighborhood community team is there to take your anger at all times. Yeah. I've never heard that that was part of their job, but I like it. Okay. So what are the, what are the hardest CS tickets that you don't like to see pop up in your screen? Exploits, death oh. threats, uh, suicides. Uh, oh, jeez. Uh, yeah, those are probably my top three, I think. I want to jump in on that and say that um, we have a very, very strict policy of if we get reports of somebody talking about self-harming or somebody suspects any sort of self-harming or suicide. We have a very strict policy in place where we contact the local authorities through the international police to get it sorted out. So if you see somebody that is broadcasting for raps uh, and is having a tough time in game, um, so you can send it to us and we will take it forward in a, um, I would say as uh, to a neutral party that can interfere and like assist. So absolutely. And, and like to talk about more on the subject of loss, uh, the most heartbreaking, uh, like on top of those three, are uh, when people lose a ship that there is dear to them. I mean, we all know that you bought that fancy, that fancy ship. You took it out for a spin, and that was the biggest mistake you ever did was to undock it because you couldn't afford to lose it. I mean, those those hurt. That's like <clears throat> watching your hard work go up in flames in this game it's always it's always hard i remember the first probe i lost to a gate camp in 2005 and i'm still bitter about it i remember my first titan loss and uh but the manner of the loss was uh anyway i feel like this ship is still with me in spirit in some way it's weird occasionally i will go back and look at the lost mail again my second Titan loss didn't do that for me. The first one, I still feel it. My first yeah. big loss, I was, um, yeah, definitely still remember it. It's my own fault. I definitely learned a lot about kill rights. Yeah. Loss? What loss? And Cyberpunk Zombie has a really good comment in Twitch chat. The worst loss is one of your friends from Eve dies. Yeah, I agree. There are some of those people who are still with us, too. Yeah, um, it's 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 an old game, and the community has been around for a long time. And uh, I mean, regrettably, people pass on, and it's it's always a tough time when that happens. Someone, if you're, uh, sorry, go on. If you're new to Eve and you're uh, uh, and you're wondering, or if you don't play and you're just listening, I will point out that. Eve has developed traditions for what we do when someone passes on. And we'll do a, a special version of a candlelight vigil that's um, made with sinosural beacons in space. And uh, the, those are those are great. Yeah, someone just mentioned there that if you if you have like a bug, um, you know, a GM support ticket and a bug report are like two different forms, right? So um, actually, it was after the GM got back to me and, and said that my thing was denied. I was like, okay, cool, thank you. And then I'll put in my bug report as well, right? You know, cover both bases just to make sure it gets to the right team. 
Uh, I mean, we work very closely with both design and uh, QA, the bug hunters. So some of the time we are able to find these defects ourselves through these investigations. Um, and we'll spot a problem and uh, try to fix it or get it to the people who are going to fix it if we see there's something that's uh, broken. So, uh, but doing a bug report never hurts. I uh, would always encourage you to do that as well as a pent out support. Uh, another question here. If someone finds someone else speaking about their self-harm or suicide, what is the best way to get a ticket or something prioritized? It would be either the live chat or a, um, I believe that there is a, uh, there is a subcategory if you go under social, I'm actually, let me spool it up so I can answer this properly. Yeah, we have a special queue where we categorize stuff and it gets fast tracked right to the front of the queue. That is one of them. I'm sure we can figure that out for you guys. But yeah, to hype GM, we go up a little bit because uh, the leads and everyone else uh, will be mad if we don't talk enough about that. Yeah, because so, we're getting a little too dark anyway. So you're going to... Small secret for uh, okay. for just people who are watching uh, talking in stations. It actually starts at midnight tonight. Uh, so just like a small head start for everyone who's watching this. And uh, you're going to have to kind of figure out what it was, but there was also something that we did last year. And then we have uh, different events happening every day and some events that run throughout the entire week. And it's super hype. It's just getting bigger and bigger every week. Like, for example, the cosplay uh, competition was something that was uh, <laughs> our idea. And then they kind of just joined it and uh, they did a bigger thing. I think if I say that right. Uh, go on, please. Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, I think so. But yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be awesome. There's like hundreds of billion worth of stuff being given out next, this week. So, wow! And you have permission from from the powers that be to do this. Oh yeah. So yeah, one of the things that I've learned in CCP is that it's better to ask for permission rather than forgiveness. Usually, it's the other way around, and you might think that, but no. No, it's because that makes it easier to plan things like this in the future. So yeah, okay. we, uh, a couple of weeks ago we saw you had that GM uh, cosplay contest. We covered it. Um, I think we covered it twice, both the day it was out and again on that Sunday show because the the prizes are just incredible, like absolutely incredible. Yeah, we were just gonna do it, and then people thought that this is a fantastic idea. They just, you know, took it and make it made it so much better. Uh, and that was just awesome to get that kind of support from the rest of the rest of the guys here. Uh, yeah, can't wait to see who wins. Yeah, uh, I've seen a lot of buzz around it uh, in the community, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what people make. And it's going to be um, great for people to make costumes and enter, even if you don't win, because once uh, the uh, the pandemic spools down further you can start taking your costumes that you made to player gatherings and uh, like show it off in real life that would be even even greater yeah one of my most uh, memorable uh moments from a player gathering was i, I think it was vegas it might have been fan fest or it might have been both actually uh where there is someone who designed like a full triglavian uh cosplay like a mask and everything and they just looked absolutely great uh in that setup and it was just like yeah, straight out of the game it's the coolest thing yeah that was uh toronto wasn't it i think that was arcanos or something like that man all these player gatherings just merge into my head uh because i've i've been to them so it might have actually been toronto you're right i, I love think as well player gatherings I think maybe, you know, as well, if you don't have time to, like, make your um, your costume for this year, it might be a good idea to, like, start for next year and get a year ahead. And then you could have, like, a full-sized, I don't know, Tristan with, like, 3D-operated folding flaps when it goes into warp and <laughs> get a nice skin on it or something. That would be pretty crazy, yeah. You can always go uh, low-tech if anyone needs, like, a, a last-minute idea, and you can just recreate 
uh, seems to be Guard's friendship, which is uh, just, I mean, it, it's made of cardboard and love, but the primary component was the cardboard, uh, at least in terms of construction. Don't forget the confidence. Cardboard, love, and confidence. That's what that friendship is made of. Yeah. I love low left cosplay. Uh, it's, I don't know what it is. See, you get the social media where they like take really good cosplay and then they just do it on a super budget and it looks <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> I was hoping for something this year. I actually haven't seen any of the contestants this year. So, when can we expect to see a dev blog? So uh, tomorrow we will release an article, a pretty beefy news article that talks about everything that's happening, um, all of the stream times, all of the all of the events themselves. Um, this year we're going to be, uh, I think we're going to have there's four days of streaming, like where we have um, something happening in the, during the course of the day, and then we also will be uh, running events that happen like throughout the entire week, like like uh, Paragon was talking about. Um, we did this last year as well. And then the GMs will be more present in game, uh, <laughs> coming into rookie systems and career agent systems and big ships and showing off. Um, Do you mean doing... more present or less invisible? That's a good question. Uh, less invisible, absolutely. All right. yeah, they're watching you, Dory. I know, I, I assume so. And when... If it starts at midnight tonight, when does it end? It ends at uh, midnight UTC, uh, night to Saturday then. Um, I think, or, or next weekend might actually be included in it. I think, I think so, yeah. You're the manager of this whole event. I feel like you should know it. <laughs> I feel like I should know it too, but... He's too excited about the start. He's not worrying about when it ends. Yeah, mo most of the big stuff is going to finish up on uh, Thursday, Friday. So if something's running, it's going to be small. Okay. And um, so it, we have the GM week. That's often when you move the uh, botted ships into high sec for everyone to blow up. Am I correct? Correct. Yeah. The, so... uh, name and shame. The name famous... and shame. <laughs> the famous Wackabot event. Yep, we have that. That's a mainstay of the of the GM week. If people want to get in position, is it still going to be Uli? Yes. Um, although I, we we will also try to ramp up our streaming uh, of it because um, I mean we still haven't we still haven't invented any sort of supercomputer that can keep ten thousand people in there, unfortunately. But uh, streaming it makes it a little bit easier. But yes, if you want to, you could absolutely camp out in Uli. And uh, you mentioned well, as well other streams. So these will be streams on CCP TV on Twitch, which will be running uh, throughout the day. A good idea to jump in there and watch them and start building up your channel loyalty points as well. Because uh, they've been giving out nice skins for those uh, those points. Yeah, the uh, the Galnet skins are super pretty. They've got the uh, best like effects in the game, I think, in terms of like the little purple play button type thing. And they are like the only way to get it is through CCTV TV. They're never like anywhere else, so uh, that's that's a moment for it. Yeah, they're great. I managed to to snag one there at the uh, Alliance Tournament feeder competition. Me too. <laughs> I got one. Yeah, yeah I, got I did one. as well. Uh, I I, I kind of redeemed my points as a joke, and CZ Conduct was like, ah, fine, here's your stupid code. And I was like, yes, I got one. It was a very exciting moment for me. Would you not just try to, I don't know, looking over his shoulder or <laughs> rummaging around at the bottom he of the was, bag for one? He was very protective of his laptop. I could not, like, pry it off of him. I tried to, like, bribe him with some chips uh maybe a few beverages he was like no i know what you're up to yeah they're they're beautiful skins and you're right the uh the like twitch doesn't it say twitch.com or something on the side and ccp tv logos on the ship as well but the ccp tv logo is on it i don't know if it has twitch anywhere on it i i have a okay. feeling they wouldn't let us brand that but yeah that's true <laughs>
Yeah, they're very pretty. Um, Is there anything uh, else you could tell us about what's planned for GM Week? Give us a second. We're being talked to security. Nice. I, I don't want to uh, to like spoil it for anyone or, or anything like that, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but um, if you've read any of the Steam reviews uh, that have made you chuckle, uh, these are some of the guys that actually wrote those Steam reviews. Uh, and so it's the same minds behind that that it came up with uh, plans for GM Week. So it's going to be uh, very fun, I, I would say. Yeah, we're the Steam reviews, guys, by the way, via uh, GeoGold. That's, uh, that's gotten very popular. We sort of changed the approach on how we reply to those. And basically, it's just us memeing. Uh, and it works, so you know why not? I love it. I have seen a couple of those, and they are really funny. And I had wished I'd written them. I thought the first one I saw was actually a joke. I thought it was, I didn't think it was real. Yeah, that is uh, <clears throat> that is uh, sort of the uh, vibe, vibe we're going for. Uh, we do we don't want you to think that a, a developer would put something so stupid on an official platform. But here we are. Wow. I wish we had some examples that we could copy and paste in and show the, the audience. Should I can go on Steam and take a look? If you can, yeah, grab something. In the meantime, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk to the audience. Someone just asked a very good question, which um, it's, it's kind of back. It's, it's a little bit dark, but I think it's like a good question. And uh, they said that they would like to know uh, they have no family, and if they have an accident or pass away from sickness, is there a way for someone in my corp to access their account to delete it or whatever needs to be done? So, like, what happens with accounts when the owner is no longer around to control them? I'm actually not certain on how we handle that. Um, we have we have policies in place for all of this and how to handle almost every any uh, anything that comes up. And uh, we are also fully compliant with the GDPR regulation in, in the EU. So um, emailing, a, uh, emailing a, an email address within CCP will, will initiate the process of deleting all your data. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the case of no family, I, uh, I'm certainly I'm just not sure, but I think, I think it could be figured out. Yeah, we're not the guys to ask about that, but... Um... You can definitely ask. Uh, that's what I would do. Just uh, about anything. Just if you if you have any questions, just said take it. We'll figure out where it goes. But you know, in the event of I know that in the event of some sort of accident, it can be really difficult um, to like give your account away posthumously. Uh, or because obviously, know. because maybe like we have no idea that this person has passed away, or or we might have no verification, and then it, it's going to be hard. Uh, but definitely just, you know, slam that ticket in and we'll figure out someone who knows the answers to this question. Because if you're a corp CEO or an alliance CEO, you, you know, your, your, your departure affects your guys, your, your team. Have, there's a very strict thing when it comes to, you know, hunting over corporations. Uh, I can say that all of these cases is just something that uh, some of us here or uh, as, you know, we're, we're going to sit down. We're going to take a look at it, right? Uh, it's not like a, <clears throat> it. It doesn't. We ha we don't have any boxes that we need to check. There's nothing like that. We're just going to look at the case, talk to the people, and see what's going on. Um, you know, it, it, it's very fluid uh, in the way. At least you know the more advanced stuff like like this would be handled uh, because we're talking about giving away perhaps a gigantic corporation inside an alliance uh, over to another person. Um, and in that case, we would just, we would find a way to verify it and figure out something that would work for uh, the players of that court. We have had uh, very complex cases over the past 15 years or 18 years. Um, and whenever something like that arises, like, like Paragon says, we just find a solution to it that everybody's happy with. If we can, if it's within uh, a legal right that we can, um, 
So anything, we, we can try to answer any question, of course. We will do our best if like, and every time, uh, like if we can do it and it makes sense, we are going to do it. Uh, so just, uh, you know, get in touch. Yeah, it's great. You seem to just treat every case as, as its own case and you deal with it as, as you, best you can, right? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, at least for stuff, that, I mean, it's such an old game. Uh, it's been around for so long. The community is so integrated, uh, complicated, and unique that, you know, you just have to take a look at it, you know, case by case. Uh, many of the things we, there's nothing written down for. There is no, there's no guide. You just have to, you just have to make the best decision you can. I uh, just, if you have ever had a friendly uh, control tower shoot a friend, uh, a blue that shoot, it shouldn't shoot, then you know that, uh, yeah, we tackle every case as it comes. <laughs> you just have to figure out what went wrong and try to fix it. Yeah, thank God they're being slowly replaced with ACLs and the new structures, right? <laughs> you I still love have, the old ones. You have no idea. You have no idea. I actually don't have been here yes. long enough to know how much of a problem it was. <laughs> Back, I, I was, I was a GM like for a time before the, um, before the Apple structures came, and I remember when we had like a slew of pretty complex player on structure cases like the control tower, something went wrong. And I just had to come in on a Saturday afternoon and set up a, a, a control tower on, C, on Singularity to try to figure out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm really happy. Yes, I'm very happy. Yeah, that's that are being faced up. Someone asked what skills or abilities you need to become a GM for you online at CCP. I like that question. Uh, well, it would be better if you play with E online. Let's just say a minimum of, I don't know, you'd probably have to be following the game for a, a few years. Um, depending on maybe what position's opening up. Um, but yeah, definitely EVE experience for a few years, uh, customer support experience for a few years. Uh, the interview process for me it was something like three months or something. Uh, multiple different interviews, uh, so be ready for that. And uh, yeah, you need to be relentlessly positive, hardworking, open-minded. Um, you know, your people skills need to be uh, cutting edge. That's just, uh, you know, everyone in this team is, you know, we we pride ourselves in having one of the best CS in. MMOs in the world, and you need to be competitive, and you need to, you know, not just be a participant. Like if you are going to join, you're you're very much willing to bring something to the team. We have another good question in in chat, which is, are all the GM positions located in Iceland, or are there remote positions or other locations? Yes. There is, um, so the, the GMs at CSP, there are actually very few of us. Um, the majority of them work uh, not for CSP directly, but a different company. And uh, there are far more of them than there are us. So that can also be something you want to take a look at if you're interested in that. But yeah, um, CSP GMs, there's there's probably there's uh, way less CCP GMs than there are game designers at CCP. And with those job positions go up on the um, the EVE online career section, would, that, would you find them in the same place? Yeah, ccpgames.com and then uh, slash careers, I guess. If yeah, you're right. if you're thinking of playing, I, I'm not even sure. I don't think we have a position open, but definitely keep track of that. If you ever open up, you know, try it out. See what happens. I do know that two positions in the community team opened up. So, and that's within well, that community team falls under uh, the PX department. So, yeah. Yay. And then there's a great story from the past here. 
supplied by Adam in, in chat. And he says, I sent a random ticket years ago, back in 2014, 2015, and I asked for the chaps at CCP to add the old star map music to SoundCloud. At the time, my kids were tiny and it helped them sleep. And by adding it to SoundCloud, I finally didn't have to leave the map open until they fell asleep. And can you thank the team for me for that, by the way? So I thought that was a sweet story. Yep, we can absolutely. I think I know exactly the person who put it up. Nice. Thank you. And then we also have a request in this is probably more for CCP Swift. Can you ask the art team to make a Galnet skin for the Providence? And I have to admit, you got a beautiful canvas to work on with some of those freighters and a lot to look at as you slowly warp across those long systems. We uh, we just asked them to, and they actually just supplied us not too long ago with some wonderful uh, skins for events. Um, they are just absolutely breathtaking. Uh, so if you go to a player event, uh, part of the thing that we do with the community team is we send you some uh, goodie bags uh, this year it's they've been um uh fanny packs which i've learned icelanders don't call fanny packs they call something else i forget um but they're, they're fanny packs uh, and also some uh, skin codes for these like super nice skins uh so uh, we probably won't be able to ask for a, a providence galnet skin for a little while <laughs> okay abby what do they call those in your country uh bomb bags Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. I yeah. I heard that and I was like, no, you're making you're making that weight up. There's no way that's real. Uh, no, nah, bomb bags. Yeah, but it's apparently it's apparently no, they're fanny packs. No, 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 it's bomb bags. I went to America and everyone was talking about fanny packs. I had no idea what was going on. Um, <laughs> those skins remember. actually that you give out for the the player events. I forget the name of those skins. I've seen them. Right, that's the ones drawn by the in person events. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think uh, General Stargazer posted a few pictures. Um, they are for the uh, Sisters of Eve ships, and they just look so, so good. Yeah, I've seen them. They're amazing looking. I, I'm not able to make any player events this year because of a pandemic. Is there any way I could like slip you some money, and then you could slip me one of them skins quietly? We won't tell anyone? No, but um, we can. We'll probably use them for more than just a, a few events. So don't worry about that. Uh, when when the world becomes more hospitable, and travel becomes uh, an option, then uh, then there will be skins for in player events. I'm really lucky, and I get to go to E Vegas in about five weeks. Uh, no, maybe not even that. It's more like between four and five weeks from now. Uh, and they can't stop me because I can drive there from here. Super excited. Do you know if we're going to get any skins for that or which ones? Uh, yes, you are getting skins for that. Don't worry. Uh, and also, you'll be getting bum bags, I'm pretty sure. Oh, but okay. no, it's in Vegas, so it'll be fanny packs. No, no, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In, in Vegas, it'll definitely be uh, fanny packs. So that that's unfair that Carneros gets a skin because he lives closer to Las Vegas and I don't. Uh, you can probably bribe Carneros to get his skin. That's a great idea. Thank you. <laughs> it's it's much better than trying to bribe me. Uh, there you go. It's better than swimming across an ocean as well. <laughs> that too. Um, I'd actually probably be yeah quicker swimming to Iceland and, and begging them for one of the skins. <laughs> so um, with the GM week as well, uh, we also have... Um, so there's the, the cosplay event, which is to submit. You're going to be submitting like pictures on social media, isn't it? With the, the correct hashtag. Yeah, with the correct hashtag. I think it's hashtag GM uh, cosplay. Yeah, GM week cosplay. And that would be on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Um, yep. Amazing prizes. And, and I love the way you're still giving out the, the Rifter USB hubs. Yeah, well, I think um, I think uh, CCP recently moved the offices. Well, recently, and uh, one and a half year ago, and I think they discovered some boxes somewhere, lying somewhere hidden, and uh, they were slowly using them for prices and to give up. I was thinking you should do an updated one with like USB three or um, like a different ship. 
That's an excellent idea. Um, those those were made for the tenth anniversary boxed edition, special boxed edition. We're almost yeah. at the twentieth anniversary. I, hopefully, they do something special for that. Yeah, hopefully, that would be something to celebrate at least. It'll be two rifters instead of just one rifter, a, or a jaguar. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I actually feel bad. I don't have one right now, so I wish I could get a rifter. I, I don't think you're allowed to enter and win the GM Wii competition. I'm sorry. No. Uh... CCP Swift, hook him up. He's working hard. I think there's, I think there's actually one right behind him on my desk that he can just steal. But I, I might be remembering it wrong. Oh, uh, there's not. He, uh, he sits like right there, by the way. So. So on Monday morning, if your rifter is missing, we know who to blame. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll make sure to get security on them again. Ah, uh, yeah, I knew that was you. Every time. No, that's great. Thank you so much. Um, is there anything else we need to know about upcoming GM Week? So there are a few events and even some contests that we always run in the uh, week itself. Um, but I kind of just want to announce it with the news item tomorrow. Um, but those are like fun little fun little competitions where we can have a laugh and maybe get some plaques and some so something more. Um, so uh, but no no renaming of GMs this time, though. Uh, apparently, apparently I wasn't here at the time, but apparently the department got a stern talking to that uh, wow. this might have gone much worse than it uh, did. That's true. What one more attempt out of a out of, out of a kind of a question for that, and that is: Is there any time slots this week that they should sort of set aside some time so that they're ready in case there's like a live stream? Yeah. So uh, the live streams for GM Week usually happen around uh, uh, four thirty-five uh, UTC because we try to fit it into our office schedule. It's uh, it's it's. Um, Time zones are still a thing, and it's like it's been difficult to fix that. Um, but those are usually the times, and uh, the uh, there will be. I, I think I'm not spoiling anything when I say there will be the uh, the GM fleet with Bjorn B. Uh, oh wow! Yeah, we will be doing that on Thursday. That'll be fun. Yeah. Yes. Thursday. Yep. And we will. Uh, <clears throat> that's usually around six UTC. So those are the those are the times. Yeah, yeah. eighteen hundred. Yes. All right. Wow, that's that's great. I look forward to that. I saw, I saw one question in chat asking about the time zones. It, there are events running twenty four seven throughout. Wow. Uh, stuff uh, the in game events, uh, which are not the streams, they run twenty four seven in every language which we support. So uh, you can at any point log in and take part. And uh, uh, yeah, the rest of the events we try to stream so that we can get some sort of interaction with people who can't be in game at that time. And but unfortunately, because time zones are a thing, uh, we can't cover every time zone uh, yet because, like Parkin said, we don't have an endless um, uh, army of of uh, GMs in the GM department. Regrettably. Yeah, that's a shame. Um, maybe nice for though. yeah, it would be nice, wouldn't it? If I had like a. It's like an endless art. That'd be great. Sorry, go ahead. No, it's just, you, you need to get to work on your pod cloning technology, and then you can just clone yourselves. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to share the world with another me. So I think I'll try to solve the time zone problem instead. But you wouldn't fit another you in here. You're like six feet eight, so you know what? Six feet, six feet nine. Uh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, he's huge, you guys. Huge. I am. Um, wow, that's massive. I, I knew a guy who was six nine. He's barely up to his nipple. Moving swiftly forward. Uh, oh, there's a, speaking of Swift, there was a question in chat if CCP Swift got uh, hazed at all when he finally moved to Reykjavik and joined the team in person. Uh, no, actually, I got here three weeks ago, uh, which has been amazingly going by fast. 
uh, and it has been just the most wonderful experience you can imagine. Uh, I, I wish there was some sort of hazing. Well, no, no, I don't wish there was some sort of hazing, but I, I'm like endlessly impressed with how great everyone has been. And I had like high hopes coming in as well. Like I was like, oh, these people are great. I've worked with them or, uh, for like uh, a few months already. And uh, as a player, I've worked with them before for years. So this is going to be good. And it was like gooder than good, uh, as the kids say. Please tell me at least one night in the last three weeks, some of your coworkers have dragged you out for a beer. That has happened. We have uh, safely consumed some uh, some beverages outside, which has been nice. Nice. Uh, it's been it's been great to see everyone, uh, you know, just just walking down the hallways, being able to say, oh, hey, I know you. Uh, can we talk about something real fast? And it's just so good that I don't have to make like a meeting and doing it digitally and with a like four hour time zone <laughs> difference. Uh, so it has been like really, really nice. Fantastic. I also believe the hazing rituals happen whenever we have like a company wide uh, some team building days. So. Yeah, oh, no, can, no. You can try to sleep. Calendar. You can tr try to sleep easy until then. Uh, great oh, question no, no. from from chat. There is a is there a way to see uh, in game what events are at any time or outside the game? So yeah, uh, they're not. I guess spoiling us just yet. But tomorrow we will have that news article announcement that will lay out all the events and the times. Right. Correct. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, then this will be in the launcher and it'll be on our website. And then if you have, uh, if you're following the uh, CCP channel on Twitch, you can set it to notify you when we go live. Correct. Uh, so just, go on. I was going to say, you could also, uh, I think uh, there are also a few tweets that are scheduled to go out uh, as well, like when the events uh, are beginning. So, uh, you can just kind of keep an eye on the forums on Twitch and on Twitter, and eventually you'll uh, you'll catch uh, some wind of what's going on. Yeah, I love the, the uh, in-game notification for when you're going live with stuff. I think it's like, because often I'll like, oh, I must watch the Alliance tournament, and then I'll forget, and then it'll like ping me in-game to watch the stream or something. I love it. Um, so listen, uh, I think that's kind of... I think it's kind of everything we need to cover for GM week up until tomorrow. Yeah, thank you for joining us today. Talk for the mic. <laughs> it was a pleasure. It's always fun to talk about our work. Excellent. I feel like, uh, yeah, sorry. I feel like uh, uh, customer support should for for companies should always be a little bit more uh, approachable and like uh, have more interactions with customers rather than just answering your tickets and in case that you lose your ship in a rift and it hurts like in an abyssal rift and it hurts and the only interaction you have is like a no Ugh. we are better than that we are we are we are actually quite nice people don't worry i won't take a personal and then it's fine it's already gone you guys are welcome to stick with us uh in the show here as we go on to the next segment uh, let you know. Can we can we check in for a moment and see if Henrik uh, has his mic working? I do. Hooray! All right, excellent. Uh, uh, let's uh, let's introduce Katia Say and Henrik Arnold and uh, hear about your achievements in game. Hey, thanks for having us. We're, it's a pleasure to be here and. While I got the mic for a moment, I do want to thank the GMs for all that they do. I think it's one of those areas that's absolutely vital to the game for not only new players, especially new players, but veterans alike. And it's one of those thankless jobs. So at least on behalf of Signal Cartel and E-Scout, thank you for what you do. Thanks. It's our pleasure. But to get to the news, and thankfully it's not about me, so I'm thrilled to actually announce this. Um, earlier this week, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it's been a blur of a week, Enrique, but uh, on Monday, I believe it was, uh, Enrique Arnoles, if I'm pronouncing that right, you're gonna have to get on to me about that too, uh, actually challenged my world record for having visited every system in EVE Online without a ship loss. And that's the key part to the record. And 
in order to be a Guinness World Record, it has to be something that's achievable by anyone. And it has to have a time factor, a time component to it as well. And so it took me a little over nine years to do it. And Enrique actually did it in less than a year. So I'm going to let him talk about his experiences and how he got started. Um, actually, I probably need to tell it, tell the story how it got started, shouldn't I, Enrique? Yeah, you do the first part and I'll take over later. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to, I'm going to wear out my voice here a little bit, but... Uh, in March of this year, earlier this year, it was going to be the second anniversary for when I completed my journey in 2019. And I wanted to do something for Signal Cartel, our corporation, uh, to kind of uh, celebrate with them that anniversary and, and make it into this, this big event internal to our corporation. And so I held a, an event starting in the 1st of February that concluded at the end of February, and we celebrated on March 9th. And the event was to recreate portions of my journey, and they would earn points for every system that they visited. They'd get bonus points if they took a screenshot, uh, if they didn't lose a ship, if they did it in the same sequence that I did, they would earn points. And then I had five tiers of prizes, giving away skins and ships and and uh, several of the real-life challenge coins that I had made for the original event several years ago. I still had a few of those left over, and so I put those into the prize pool as well. And uh, I wasn't sure how well the event would be received. I didn't know if anyone would participate, quite honestly, and was very surprised that the number of folks that actually jumped in and then took part in it and give out a bunch of prizes to the court. But of course, there's always that one that's got to, you know, really tackle the challenge and, and run with the ball. And in this case, it was on Reek. So I'll let him pick up the story from here. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so with the challenge and the event, uh, Katja started. Uh, up, leading up to that, we had a little chat on, on Discord where everyone was able to ask Katja questions about what he did in the past and about the event. And uh, I had a lucky evening where I was the only one in the room with Katja and we had a little chat and I already said to him, I like the event and the idea behind it, but I'm a completionist. If I start something, I need to complete it. Um, so the event started and I took off. And after, I think, a little over two weeks, I got the whole case space covered. Uh, I visited all the uh, systems in case space in the exact order as Katja did years ago. So going from there, um, I thought, yeah, when this is done, let's just see how far I can get. And with the case space, I also didn't lose a ship. So that was good. I was doing good in the event. Uh, but let's just see how far I can get um, doing the whole challenge. So I dove into uh, yeah, into JSpace, into Anarchus, and I had a yeah, little bit of pro that I was already living in a wormhole. And yeah, took it from there, just seeing how it went. And in the meantime, still chatting with, uh, with Katja about uh, how he experienced things, uh, what he did. Um, which ships he used and I think in the first one week of, or two weeks from uh, from uh, JSpace I got over 400 wormholes covered already and it was uh, actually going quite nice from there I kept doing my thing collecting new uh, new systems putting them on the list and up until a certain point uh, where it became a little bit harder because the just less systems that uh, that are new and the systems that i needed were uh, yeah not that easy to find so to say and that is also the point that i got the same help uh, in finding the last systems as katja did during her challenge and yeah so the the corporation signal cartel was involved 
and um, I got a core team with Katja in it, with Tamayo and with Captain Crinkle, which uh, I do want to uh, shout out to for the big help they did. And what we did, we fly with uh, with Allison in Signal Cartel to keep up with all the caches in all the systems, all the support caches for lost pilots, and uh, we tend them as Signal Cartel. And so a lot of Signal Cartel members visit a lot of wormhole systems um, during their day, and we made use of that for my yeah for my challenge. So every time a Signal Cartel member visited a wormhole system I didn't visit yet, I got a ping in Discord, and either I was on or Captain Crinkle, Tamayo, or Katja were on, and we were trying to get to those systems as fast as possible. And if it was not me, the guys were holding them until I was able to get there. Um, yeah, all with all this, it, uh, it took some t uh, more time for the last ones, and then there is that last system, which was uh, a C5 wormhole, which I still needed, and it took a little bit over, I think a little bit over a week. But in the meantime, uh, I was getting married, so I was not able to get online, and of course. The last system was found on the day of my marriage by someone within Signal Cartel. Um, so it took me a little more days to get to, uh, to that system. And in the end, it was indeed uh, the 13th of September that I, uh, I was able to visit the last system. So I think that the verification uh, for the Guinness World Record is still pending. And uh, we also reached out to CCP for, uh, yeah. For the acknowledgement, and uh, yeah, from there uh, I'm just uh, seeing what's going to happen now. And to be honest, I'm looking forward to the point where I can just lose a ship again. <laughs> I had a laugh at some of that, uh, just remembering that uh, Bob was definitely at work when that last system popped up for him when, on the day of his marriage, on his wedding day. That was pretty cool. That's uh, some luck, yeah, right? I mean, <laughs> Would would you really want to ask your your bride to be, hey, any chance I could uh, log in there for fifteen minutes, grab a grab a wormhole system real quick? Ah, uh, well, I didn't have my phone with me the whole day, so I only saw it at, uh, yeah when I was back on the, in my room at the evening that it was found on uh, on that day, but I uh, didn't dare to ask her whether I could log in to my laptop, which I did bring. Uh, because I think then I could have filed for a divorce uh, immediately also. <laughs> no doubt. That's incredible. Yeah, the, um, so for those people who, who are like asking in chat and aren't aware, um, the Anoikis would be like the in-game uh, lore name for, for Wormhole Space, or J-Space as it's known. Uh, Empire Space would cover all of high sec and low sec. And Poshman is obviously the new Triglavian region that uh, came out in last September, October. October. Actually, we have the anniversary coming up um, next month in October. I think it's the 9th or the 12th is the exact day. But that week is a Triglavian week of uh, celebrations. And we had Sahara Jackal on during the week to tell us about it. So that's where Poshman is. I can't believe you managed to do Anoikis in what is essentially seven months. Yeah, to be honest, I can't believe it myself either. Um, I was just keep, uh, doing it system by system and, and kept thinking, yeah, I'll just see where uh, where this will end. Um, I never had the... Uh, yeah, I did have the belief, but it was still it was surreal that I was getting closer and closer to the end, and also not losing a ship, having a, a couple of uh, tricky situations uh, with gate camps or with camp to wormholes. But yeah, I did not have that many setbacks, and yeah, it was just it's just an unbelievable. I still can't believe it that that I meant, uh, actually reached the end of it. Can I wow. ask me? Uh... Go on. Yeah, I was just going to clarify real quickly so that folks don't get the wrong idea on how he achieved uh, wormhole space. Um, he did the bulk of the systems himself, 
And when we finished the event, the original event, Enrique asked me, he says, how, how do you feel about me pursuing your record? And I'm like, go for it. Absolutely. We're here to support you if that's what you want to do. And uh, we offered him the same uh, ability that was offered to me back when Minxie was CEO and Thrice Happus was our COO. When I approached her about getting the help of Signal Cartel with my portion of that journey, um, she said, yeah, what we'll do is, is I'll hand you off to Thrice and we'll see what we can do with Allison being able to help you, you know, find systems and that kind of thing. So for me, when we got down to the last 600 systems is when Allison kicked in to help me. We had a cover story, so nobody knew in Signal Cartel that they were actually helping me find the systems. And so we engaged the corp with the last 600. For Enrique, what we did, pretty much the same thing, believe it or not. We actually threw a cover story out there and we waited till he got to the last 600 systems of wormhole space that he needed. And uh, our cover story this time around was uh, that we were doing research in wormhole space because we feel that there's this clustering to it. And it's something that I've talked about for years that there's something to wormhole space and clustering. So we used that as the cover. So no one knew that they were actually finding systems for Enrique uh, behind the scenes as he got the last 600. So from a, uh, the perspective of how many did he do, he did the bulk of them, except for the last 600 where he did get the assistance of Signal Cartel to get the systems. I think there's yeah. about two and a half thousand, is there? Yeah, it's like 25, 2600. Wow. 2,604 to be uh, precise. <laughs> uh, yeah, what Katja already said, I got help from the last 600 Wimmel systems in. However, um, at the beginning, there, was, there were just so many systems popping up of, as being found by members of Signal Cartel that I, yeah, the, of course, uh, Captain Krinkle, Tanayo, and Katja were there, but I could still find most of them myself. I think in the first few weeks even of when Allison was on, I did, yeah, I did still did most of the things myself uh, in, in going to the systems, flying through case space to get to that one entrance from a wormhole chain, chain and then scanning signatures to get to the to the right system. Um, yeah so but I was uh, yeah really honored that, that, that Katja was offering help. I also took it so good that I was even trying to uh, to go for the challenge. Uh, I joked around of uh, that the, for the last systems, probably Katja was waiting uh, behind the wormhole to uh, <laughs> to shoot me, but uh, that didn't happen. And in my heart, I already knew that it wasn't going to happen. But yeah, it was just a, a big inspiration and, and big help. And I also want to thank you for that. Yeah, to be fair, Captain Crinkle and Tamayo really helped him out the most with those systems where he needed help. I was pretty much just a cheerleader the whole time. <laughs> I think I got one system. Can I ask, um, what chip did you use? Yeah, good question. Um, so for uh, K-Space, so for known space, I uh, reckoned that there would be a lot of gate cams in, uh, in NullSec with, uh, with a lot of uh, bubbles. So I used an Ares for that. And for JSpace, I needed something where I could, uh, of course, scan signatures. And I've always been a big fan of the Astero. So I used an RS for, uh, for KSpace and Astero for JSpace, only two ships. Yeah, the Astero is a great ship. And you would have completed a lot of this before the interdiction changes as well, isn't that right? Like the KSpace stuff? Yeah, the KSpace was done uh, completely before the interdiction changes. And uh, the only really positive change that there was for me was in Pochman, because uh, at first when I started, the gates were not open yet. You couldn't fly from system to system. So I took a lot of filaments to get to Pochman and then just finding out that I already had the system I, I jumped to. So I had to get back and then try another one yeah, every time taking uh, 15 minutes. And then the announcement came that for, uh, for a lot of the Pochman systems, the gates were going to open so I could just fly around uh, so that all that really helped in, in covering Pochman otherwise I think I wouldn't have made a 
a big difference on, on time in completion, but would have in in efforts of being uh, waiting for 15 minutes every time. Yeah, so you are able to take the home filaments to get into those three home systems, and then you could just fly around the loop of the triangle doing all the internals and borders. That's cool. Yeah, indeed. Um, I, I, I like Katia posted this in our Discord during the week, and uh, I, I knew her story about visiting all of the uh, all the systems, and I was like, "That's amazing." Um, I wonder how long this could take if you like really pushed hard. And I guess we have some idea of an answer here. I mean, nine months if if you really push it, you can actually visit all of Eve. And I can't believe you did it in the same order as well. That's like an extra step of complexity. Yeah, that was so case space in the same order as, as Katja was because I could earn extra points with it. And yeah, yeah. So I was going for that. Uh, meanwhile, while doing that, what, which was also a part of the event Katja said, um, is to take a, a screenshot in every system, in every case space system of one of the uh, planets. So I also did that during my, uh, my journey. How big is that folder with like seven thousand, seven and a half thousand pictures? Yeah, I put it on Google Drive and it was pretty big indeed. So was it was it always a planet or did you change it up? Was it like the sun sometimes or No, always a planet. That's great. You didn't happen to make a safe spot in every system along the way, did you? Well, for the uh, challenge, I needed a bookmark in every system. So I have now a bookmark of every system in the game. Wow, that's pretty cool. You must need a couple of shared bookmark folders for that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> indeed. And for the for case base, most of the bookmarks are near the gate because sometimes I was just jumping through the gate, making a bookmark and jumping back because I was hitting a dead end or something. And for JSpace, I made them most of the time at the wormhole I came through. But of course, with wormholes disappearing, I probably have some safe spots uh, in uh, in JSpace now for for coming time. Yeah, you happen to have a safe spot with a uh, for like every wormhole system. You should you should rent that out. Yeah, or keep it for myself if I need it. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I actually have on my character's bio uh, in game for folks that want to check it out uh, my bookmark shared for wormhole space. Separate okay. to the signal cartel bookmark? Yeah, separate to the signal cartel bookmarks. Yeah. Wow, that must be like what's the what's the limit on bookmarks in a folder? Uh, forget what is it, Enrique? You probably know better than I. Five hundred for a shared folder. Yeah, CCP, please make it bigger. Yeah. yeah. We have nothing to do with that. I know. Oh, I know. That's the best <laughs> <of> <laughs> job. Uh, oh, CCP Swift is here. Uh, Swift, any chance we can make that bigger? You're learning. Uh, there you go. I'll, I'll write it down. I'll put it on a post it note and I'll ask around. <laughs> uh, one of the things that I was like most curious about is um, the, I forget what we call them, but like the milestones in game. Uh, it now shows you as having gone to every single system, which is, I guess, the one difference from from Katya's record because Katya started his right. Uh, journey right before or just before uh, that was implemented in the game. Yeah, that was implemented just before I finished, actually. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> three, three or four months before, and it, I was like, yeah, there's no way I'm starting over. Thanks. When we uh, when we saw the news, uh, the the signal cartel like uh, letterhead uh, talking about this achievement, we we're like, this had to be a typo, right? There's no way that this is achievable in like this like amount of time and how quick it was, especially for like Empire Space. I seem to remember it was like three days, uh, just absolutely mind boggling, and in a game that's. Um, you know, so old and so stored where it feels like everything's already been done before. Uh, just to be able to say, hey, you know, this is uh, an achievement that you can do that's absolutely jaw-dropping and 
uh, involves not killing anyone or not betraying anyone. Like none of those things that people like generally associate with Eve Online. Uh, so it's just such a cool, cool story. And it just uh, the fact that it's uh, like giving new life uh, to challenges in Eve is just something that that we're all fascinated with. Is there any chance we can get like a little mini monument of Henrique to go next to Katia's monument in real life, or in the in re, in the game? <laughs> sorry, not in real life. <laughs> that would be great. Uh, I always uh, fly by that monument whenever I can. Fire firework off on it every once in a while. Uh, it was actually one of the first things I did uh, as CCP Swift. I like uh, when I was learning how to teleport places and stuff. Wow. I went on my player ship to the. Uh, to the monument and just fired off a few fireworks and I was like, ah, I did this. Oh, I'm, I'm touched. That's nice. Thanks. Yeah, and for me, the, the Katya monument is also something special because my journey actually started there and K-Space also ended there, but being the start of my journey made it extra special also to see the monument and start off from there and now, yeah, almost eight months later having, uh, having done this. Fellow Signalier actually suggested, and I see uh, Rossio's in the chat as well, who toured all of New Eden, uh, unfortunately had ship losses along the way, but still it's a huge achievement to tour all of New Eden, including wormhole space. Uh, but he did it all on his own, which is pretty amazing in and of itself. And if I write, jumped every gate too, which is pretty amazing. But uh, Someone in Corp did mention that maybe, you know, a plaque or something added to the monument of folks who have done it. Uh, it would be cool. I know they were one of the first players to do all of known space was an Australian player, but I don't remember the character's name, unfortunately. So it'd be kind of cool to have that those tidbits out there somewhere. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I'd love to have like a plaque on there somewhere. And then hopefully I'm not cashing checks. That, well, I'm definitely <laughs> cashing yeah, checs that someone else has saying. to uh, or that someone else has to follow up on. But I, I would just absolutely love to see a plaque just to to be able to commemorate such like incredible achievements. Yep, you've said it out loud now. We're going to have to hold you to that. <laughs> uh, no, that's incredible. Like when we saw the news that uh, I think I had the same reaction to to Swift, which was that like this has to be a typo. Like I had to double check the dates, and I was like, "But the year is all the same. How, how did he do it with under a year?" And then um, broke it down. I mean, incredible achievement. Having been there, done that, it's absolutely amazing <laughs> that he did it. I mean, granted, my pace was casual. Uh, I wasn't in it for speed at all. Uh, but for someone who just tackled it and went after it, man, that's, that is mind blowing. I know this is probably like asking if you have like a favorite child, um, but do you have like a favorite, do either of you have a favorite system that you've like traveled through where you're like, um, either it has like a special meaning to you, not because, not necessarily because maybe you started there or uh, just one that you just love the aesthetics of, love the, the sun at uh, or the star at rather. Yeah, I do, but, uh, is one is, I don't know the exact name. It's a Milsec system, but it's a system where at the moment I was flying through it, the, the big war was uh, was there. So there were titans being held in in bubbles, and so it was very special flying through those systems or the, yeah, that system uh, during that war and, and seeing a little bit of part of the fight, uh, but as well staying away from it because I didn't want to get caught in it. But so that system. Yeah, it's, it's special. I think it's G5, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, it's something to keep in mind is that, you know, he flew through some of this during the act of war this last year, so which is pretty amazing. For me, I managed to evade all that stuff along my way. There wasn't any major, major conflicts going on in any particular areas, so he did have to go through an active war zone. As for gate, for me, um, uh, Satio is definitely my favorite system. Uh, as a role player, I created Katia's history around that system because that's where the Akura are from, the third planet from the sun there. So it tied into her background story and everything. That's where my journey started and that's where my journey ended. So, and of course, the monument is kind of uh, icing on the cake. Uh, yeah, that's a great chunk of icing on your, your cake there at the end. It's fantastic and it's a credit to you. 
And also, you know, congratulations, Henrique, and it's a credit to you as well for exploring the whole universe of EVE Online. Thank you. No, thank you. I mean, if you didn't do it, we wouldn't be here talking to you about it. It's it's your achievement. So, yeah, it's true. Can I ask, how did we confirm this last time? What do we need to do? Yeah, I was just about to say, where where is it at right now? So... I, uh, behind the scenes, and I'm going to put some pressure on him, and Swift, you put some pressure on him too. Uh, I'm working with dopamine, CCP dopamine, and uh, trying to find out, you know, what's the proper way to do this. I know you can go to, to the Guinness World Records site and actually challenge the record there. Uh, we haven't done that yet. We're waiting for dopamine to, to give us some guidance in that. So he is looking into that to see if they'll be, if CCP will be the ones to actually make the submission for the record or if Enrique needs to do it himself and work it that way. Either way, CCP has to validate uh, that this has been achieved and uh, confirm it with Guinness World Records and then it'll go from there. So that's where it's at at the moment. I saw dopamine typing away uh, last week, so I'm sure that's what he was typing away <laughs> awesome. about. He is definitely the the man with all the plans uh, and the best one to, to go after for something like this. Yeah, that's good to hear. Yeah, I haven't bugged him too much. I tried to be nice to him. I know you guys are super, super busy. and, and But uh, some validation verification would be awesome. I'm, I'm sure uh, once GM week is over, they'll have a little bit more free time to get back uh, verifying that record for you. I mean, sure. If anyone asked me to verify something, I could do it, but <laughs> yeah, no problem. I mean, I think the last thing we have to do is uh, in, invite Enrique to uh, to Polaris, <laughs> just to have a little swing around so we can add that system uh, to his bucket list. There you go. That would be very nice. No, oh, well, I mean, yes. if that's the... <laughs> So I was gonna say, you better there. not ma- ma- you, you better not make that a regular reward otherwise everyone's gonna be flying over the whole system if, just to get a I look would, if that would be the last system of this track that'd be kind of cool like you'd finish every single system and then we would have to like pull you in the last one finish you off that'd be cool yeah ccp falcon actually took me out there uh like the week after i completed my journey so that was very cool and of course gms i don't i don't recall if you guys were there at the time or not but a lot of devs and gms were in the system doing the fireworks thing which was really awesome uh for those of us who are for those people watching who wouldn't know what is polaris yeah polaris is uh, if you know in the northeastern section of the map in known space there's three regions out there that you can't get to Unless you're specifically teleported there by CCP, and that and that's the developer's systems. Uh, the main one being CCP's headquarters in-game, if you will, is Polaris. I'm told it's the only named uh, system in uh, Jove space. And then isn't, aren't, aren't uh, Alliance tournaments sometimes held in one of the other Jove space systems? Right. I think they'll use Polaris sometimes as a staging area, pulling in. So you, if you participated in an AT, you may actually have visited one of those systems? I believe the right. system name is PE1. Yeah, there's PE1 and JB007 are the, the two systems that we've used for the uh, Alliance tournament on uh, Tranquility. Yep, and these we can see like on the in-game map or, or on Dotlan, uh, they're in the Jove Empire regions. We just can't get to them because we don't have the magical powers. Right, now the Guinness World Record is actually based only on the player reachable system. So he, he doesn't need the system to uh, break the record. Uh, it's just kind of like another icing on the cake there. Yeah, without a doubt, it would just be like uh, some added ceremony to the uh, to the achievement, which I think is very cool. Yeah, I think that is very cool. And if there was any way uh, a certain CCP community dev here could uh, work that out, that'd be great. I'll, I'll make sure I'm allowed to. But then, assuming I am, which I imagine I am, uh, we'll absolutely arrange it. Yeah, that would be totally awesome. Yeah, I have to make sure you take a screenshot at the uh, at the planet when you get there at the sun. Uh, well, listen, thank you um, 
about I guess about Katia, Henrique, and Signal Cartel as a whole for like doing that an amazing achievement again for us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we will just uh, we're getting close to the end here, so we can just cover a little bit of news that came out during this week. Um, obviously, this week was the start of a new quadrant, the Gateway Quadrant. Um, amazing, amazing new player experience. I personally played through it. I thought it was just such a great like first introduction to Eve, the new AI or air uh, stations. Um, I love I, I like I love the Astero, but I like I love you get an Astero at the beginning and then you have to be blown up in it. Um, amazing c- cinematic to go along with that new introduction. Which was also the advert or the, the the video for the quadrant. So if if you don't go back and watch it in game, you can go to the the dev blog where they have it and the uh, YouTube announcement trailer for this quadrant is that in game cinematic. Um, along with that came some patch notes because we got the new skill plan and skill uh, skill user interface for the the planner and the skill queue. And then we also got um, uh, some more ice belt spawns. The the spawn rate improved, and uh, a little bit more mercoxid and nullsec. Thank you very much, by the way. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's actually one of the things that kind of uh, slid under the radar for a lot of people. They're like, oh, skill plans, oh, uh, NPE, oh, UI. Uh, but they totally missed, well, and it's very easy to because it's such a, a big day. Uh, we did increase, as Carneros mentioned, the uh, number of ice belts. Uh, we actually increased uh, where they spawn, so it's a little bit more static. And uh, the number of... Uh, basically, we <laughs> we made it easier to get more fight because that was a, uh, a limiting factor starting to kind of be a, pain, a thorn in the sides for Tech 2 manufacturing. So um, our coxit spawns are up, I think, threefold or something like that. Uh, so that's something that, uh, the, the teams went through and then it's kind of snuck in there very quickly. The CSM also played a big role in getting those out, uh, as soon as they are right. So the CSM were like, Hey, while you're doing this, can you maybe do this? And the uh, econ team was like, well, this is something we wanted to do. I guess we could go a little bit faster. And, uh, they just went ahead and did it cause they are all stars. Thank you very much. It's, it's enough to feel the difference. So it's appreciated. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm always fascinated by how players react to news uh, and just watching like the Gita market for for ice products and for uh, Morphite just uh, start crashing has been uh, really fun to watch. Not all of it. Ice excavators didn't crash. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you need those to, to get the ice. Yeah. Um, yeah well, was... Speaking about crashing, one thing that happened is that you did reduce the spawn chance for all the extra mycocerins and gas in null sec and low sec by 60%. Uh, do you know anything about this? Because um, I, I had a theory that this is just, there was so much extra gas sites spawning that like just weren't even being utilized and harvested. Uh, I have, I, I, I have like a 75% understanding of it, but I don't want to give like bad information out. That's uh, but that's also, it's also another thing that's the CSM flagged as, as well. Okay. Just put the, the gas being used in the new industry reactions. People are just worried you were trying to curtail the proliferation of bigger ships. Um, I thought it was maybe just not having so many gas sites, just spawning, not being used and then dying again. Um, but yeah, that happened. So we did see a jump in the gas prices uh, almost immediately as, as soon as that dev blog or the patch notes hit. Um, and yeah, and then I guess the other big news was the skill plan UI and the skill training queue UI. Um, speaking of new player experience, they did remove the 24 hour limit for the alpha training queue. That's like really important. That's really cool. So before you could only add skills to the queue up until like 24 hours and then it, if you added a, if you had 18 hours of skill queue and then you added a, a day 24 hour skill you couldn't add any more than that now that's been removed along with the limit of 50 skills 
for alphas and omegas being increased up to 150. So we can add like way longer skill queues. Yeah, that's a... Uh, it's so much better even having the skill queue. Do you remember what it was like before? Uh, it was crazy back in the day. I, one of my first exposures to EVE Online was my roommate um, years and years ago before I started playing would alarm clock in the middle of the night to change his skill queue because he he hadn't yeah anyway he hadn't learned the trick of do little skew cues skills during the day and then put a long one on at night yeah that's uh, what i yeah. did as well uh it would be like cruiser five or something during the evening and then during I, the day one that i could do a little bit faster my best memory was command ships five and then I took like a month's summer break and came back and I had this skill ready. It was the best. I tried to do the same thing when I joined CCP and they banned my character at first. They had told me, okay, you won't be able to access your character for three months or whatever it was, six months or three months. I think it was six months. And I said, okay, I'll put on long a long skill. And then they said, nope, you won't be able to train anything either. You'll be banned. Oh. Oh, that was that was my reaction. Did it make you reconsider taking the job? Was it like, hmm? No, no, I didn't do that. that. You are compensated after you get unbanned. But... Oh, OK, so you got like the skill points back or something? No, not back then. Oh, OK, well. Oh, we've OK. Gotten better, I guess. I'm, yeah, I've, I've got a, I've no got a bunch of unallocated skill points uh, from when my characters were on ice for a little bit. Oh, nice! That's cool. Feels good just to have. I, I don't. I'm like super weird about that. Uh, I hoard those skill points like I'm some sort of weird, uh, like uh, dragon, and it's my pile of gold. Gold. I I never use it for anything because. I'm always like, well, I never know when we're going to need it for, for something. I've got like 250 million skill points. And I'm like, no, 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 can't use these like 15 million unallocated because I might need it one day. Uh, you know, you can never be too sure. So it's just going to get higher and higher because I'm, I'm a crazy person. I love nice. saving those up to be able to like immediately get into something I need to then and there, you know, at a, at a minute's notice. I was like to try and keep a couple of million uh, free skill points. Yeah, I saw someone in an alliance tournament lose a strategic cruiser and take the skill point loss, but he had some skill points saved up and he immediately applied it and fixed it so he could go back in and, and on the next match. And I thought, that is so just badass. I want to have some handy for that kind of stuff at all times. Yeah, luckily they uh, they removed that skill point loss, so... He won't, he won't have to waste his skill points retraining a skill again. God, I remember learning clones and then having to ensure your clone for the SP. That was awful. We've come a long way. Let's get back on news. Yeah, so... Um... Oh, we also had a new station actually uh, appear in space. So if anyone remembers during the Mimnitar uh, Empire event week or day, um we had to like pick our tribe the one of the seven tribes and then the tribe with the most points would get a station so it was the tucker tribe they now have a council halls of liberation station in the pathor system Um i've been and visited it really cool it's got a nice kind of unique skin on it i believe i don't think i've seen that on any other station before nice probably smells new inside <laughs> uh probably still smells a bit rusty um, and then we also had the MER, the M-E-R, the Monthly Economic Report for the month of August dropped this week. Uh, we'll have to do an in-depth show this coming week about the Monthly Economic Report. One thing we can report very quickly is that, and this will be close to your heart, Carneros, have you seen the NPC bounties by region? No, I have not done yet. Oh I've, my God. I've been traveling this week. Delve is, uh, is back. Delve looking good. What about Fountain? I live in Fountain. I'll look later. You're about 10th on the list. Um, that's better. That's improvement. Yeah, it absolutely okay. is. But Delve is number two, uh, just 
behind Veil vale of the Silent. So, oh. um, yeah, over 2.4 trillion in bounties. Good. People needed it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. After uh, 12 months of being under siege. That 2, 2.4 trillion doesn't put a dent in the uh, war debts. <laughs> Never mind. Um, so yeah, that was great. We'll have a show coming this week where we can uh, spend some time getting uh, in depth with the with the multi economic report. Oh, very another brief moment is the proving ground event uh, that just finished up. No, it doesn't. It just started two days ago and it finishes up in two days. So we are in the middle of this PvP proving ground event. I really like this idea. It is the Corvettes, the basic beginner rookie ships we can all get for free. So uh, only the Imperial, Ibis, Velator, and the Reaper modules and drones are restricted to meta level 4 and pirate implants are not allowed. I think that's a really cool idea. Yeah, and you can't even uh, you can't even use like the the pirate faction rookie era corvettes, which few people know actually exist, but they do exist. Um, so you you can you can't like cheese your way to a victory with those. You have to use the normal ones. It's a four v four, and uh, it is absolutely amazing because the ships have like such a little structure that uh, a lot of the times the winner is like their ship is on fire, obviously. Uh, and there's just like slivers left. So it's a, it's quite exciting, even though you don't really lose anything when you lose. We saw what the, uh, there a couple of months ago, you had like a battleship event and, and the price of battleships had gone up so high that you ended up kind of like giving, uh, ISK and stuff as rewards to incentivize the, the battleship, um, abyssal event. This is the complete opposite, right? This is like free ships. <laughs> Yeah, uh, though I found myself doing the the very awkward thing of buying uh, Veliters because I wanted to use a Velator instead of the Ibis. Uh, and people were like trying to scam me on that too. Like they were asking so much for a free ship and I was just a sucker and I paid for it. Why didn't wow. you just get a character of that race? I was uh, a combination of too rich and too lazy, I guess. Uh, I'm not wow. like super rich in the game, but I'm also very lazy. So I was like, ah, oh, fine, I'll do this. But uh, Vel uh, but Ibises are, are super dominant anyway, so I, I'll be good for the uh, for the Ibises going forward. Uh, also uh, announced this week was the winners of the Corporation Propaganda Contest. I'll put a link for that in chat right here. Um, so we like. We still have some propaganda contests ongoing for the Caldari event, I believe, that will be finishing up this week. Um, but like these are just for player corporations. Again, another fantastic event run by CCP with like really cool prizes. I mean, first place, a thousand plex, ten of any skin worth two hundred and fifty plex from the New Eden store. Um again, second wow. place, like yeah, second place, seven hundred and fifty plex, ten skins. Third place is 500 plex and again, 10 skins. Some fantastic uh, graphics and art great, there. Great job on the prizing. Yeah. And uh, between the corp propaganda contest, the GM week uh, cosplay contest, there's been like some amazing, amazing giveaways by CCB. The stuff you get at GM week is only except like you can only get it this week. It's the only week of the year where you can get the stuff that it's been giving out. Uh, to receive it, so do not miss it. Last year it was the combat medic skins for the uh, tier one logistics cruisers. So, any hint? Well, I'm not even going to ask. You're not going to tell us. We'll just have to wait and see what comes. I'm not <laughs> see the head shaking. Um, so yeah, check out those posters, guys, and like you know, keep keep an eye out um, for the next. Uh, Oh, and the videos as well, right? Some fantastic corporation videos. Uh, but keep an eye out and like always enter because I just love these like community art contests. I think the Eve community can be one of the most um, unique and colorful communities when it comes to propaganda. Um, and again, just uh, we are going to cover this later on in this coming week because there's been a lot of action in the last few days in Eve Online with regards player news. 
we had a live coverage of a battle that took place in Esoteria that we that was live on our Twitch talking and stations, and it is now on YouTube as well. The one with this all was... the super carriers that got tackled. Oh yeah, the uh, and that was I mean... the second super carrier battle that day. There was another one yes. in in the north. Yeah, we had um. So the the main one is Army of Mangoes uh, versus versus everybody. To be honest, I mean, Imperium was there. What a strong force of you know Goon Swarm in it, Bastion and all their allies. Uh, Fraternity was there, and then a numerous third parties: NC Dot, Test, Dread Bomb. Well, um, if you if you tackle that many super carriers in space for that long, you'll just pull people from all over the game who don't care who the participants are and they just want to shoot super carriers you know yeah absolutely it's like ringing what, what do they call it Ring, ringing the dinner bell right yeah um so we had up to 60 supers or there were 60 supers i think about 30 got tackled which is just a phenomenal amount of supers um in the end the butcher's bill was 10 nixes and three aeons fully destroyed and then obviously there was a lot more losses in a subcap fleet um amazing amazing battle and we did a two-hour stream of that and earlier on that day a revenant and a revenant is like a faction super carrier a revenant and, got destroyed three hells yes that was, that was um yeah but they paid for it with a fair number of dreads yeah was, yeah, yeah. That was oh. an incursion fleet. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've ever run an incursion fleet um, and you haven't tried it in a supercarrier, I have to say, it's more fun. Never done it in a Revenant, but a, a, a Revenant or a Vendetta is, is probably is the, the best uh, experience you can have in an incursion, in, in my opinion. But yeah, really, really good. But yeah, don't get caught in a gate with a dread bomb trap. Yeah, I believe um, it was a log off trap and they caught him on the in gate. So I, I don't run incursions in supers. Uh, Carnero says it's a great idea and it's lots of fun. I'm sure the hunters would thank you if you go out there and actually run super uh, incursions in your supers. Well, it was better before the uh, resistance nerf, but uh, I haven't I haven't done it since then. But yeah, no, but it's a great experience. I would uh, like to jump in because I have to run. Uh, yep. Thank you so much for having me, guys. And I'm sure that uh, Paragon will keep up the keep the fort for CCP while when I'm gone. So thanks again, and thank I hope you guys have fun uh, during Geo Week. Thank you. We're going to be winding down soon anyway. We're just doing yeah. a new segment. I think we're almost at the end. Um, a lot of this stuff is just what happened in the last day or two, and we will be covering it more in depth during the week. So um yeah i think that was all the big kills we had the the revenant super we had the big mad super fight um there's lots of work going on in in outer ring between like imperium and triumvirate well that actually no i'll tell you about that one because i was i was in that battle the outer ring thing was triumvirate picking on some uh smaller groups living in outer ring that was not that actually was not triumvirate picking a fight with the imperium that was the imperium getting called in by our friends nearby saying hey can you help us against this triumvirate aggression and we said okay so triumvirate comes on grid with um a substantial uh uh fleet it was like 50 or 60 i think it was 50 tengus and then like 10 Logi lokis um a strategic cruiser fleet and they had some claymores and some hugens and lachesis so we the bastion uh dropped um a tornado fleet on them and bounced around on grid shooting them and we had 35 tornadoes um in our main blob and in a, a few support group ships too and, we're st and um turns out 35 tornadoes wasn't enough to break 
one of their tengus uh, flying our usual titanium sabo, sabo. So we had to switch to EM and EMP and get really close on it to do it. And, and then they dropped some dreadnoughts too. And it was interesting because they had all um, high angle weapon dreads designed to shoot subcap ships, except for one Phoenix in the middle who was long range and shooting cruise missiles at the structure that was the main cause of the war. The, the triumvirate, the, the, the battle objective was um, the final timer on a structure. And triumvirate's trying to kill one of the local structures. So yeah, that was, you know, they were picking off slow tornadoes on, on the missed up warps and things like that. It was, it was exciting. And initiative were there too. Outer Ring, Nick. Outer Ring was the region. Just anyway, about our port. Oh, thank you for dropping that. And it was a lot of fun. I love tornado fleets, but so it gets me going. Sorry. No, no, I love it. I, I like that the war has been over now, and instead of all of the fighting concentrated in like one or two regions, we're starting to see lots of little action happening all over, and obviously some big action with supers and revenants, but. Lots of more options for kind of these small to medium sized engagements. Um, I I kind of think we're kind of running along here, and that is almost exactly a good time to end. We will again be talking about some of this um some of this player news during the week. We'll be talking about the mer and all that stuff during the week. But right now, I think the focus will be on a big thank you to. Uh, CCP Paragon, CCP Goat, CCP Swift, the whole GM team for coming on the show today and giving up your time to talk to us about you know, the work you do uh, in the game we love. Yeah, it was great, uh, great being here, and uh, th thanks so much for having us. I, I hope uh, everyone's really gonna have a lot of fun with uh, GM Week. Again, like these guys have gone like all out in terms of. Uh, how hilarious and, and entertaining these events are going to be. So uh, definitely like tune into CCP to, to check it out. Yeah. Not much there. there. It's going to be awesome. Thank you. Go check out the uh, one small shout out. Go check out Mike Kingsville from EV Uni. He's on uh, CCP's Twitch channel in about two minutes after we're done. Yay. We'll go over there. I have one more shout out too. Next Sunday, if you have any uh, friends who've recently come back to EVE, next Sunday I'm doing a returning pilot reorientation uh, at 1800 on Sunday over on the CCP uh, channel. So twitch.tv slash CCP. Um, we're going to tell returning pilots what has changed since the last time they played. Thank you. And I sorry, while you're plugging that, I'd like the plug you've done. This is like your third one now, I think, at this point. Um, and they've yeah. all been great. So please oh, do watch you. these. Yeah, no, I love them. And I, I've, I've shown them to some friends who've really appreciated you getting them back in. Thank you very much. So listen, guys, you want to hang out with us here? We will go raid CCP and um, watch this new EVE Academy stream, which looks really interesting. Thank you so much from all of us here talking in stations. Fly safe. <laughs>